All right, hey everyone, and welcome to a little paint.net tutorial here. So I'm gonna be showing you how to add a shadow behind objects in paint.net, kind of like what I have with this enchantment table here against this bookshelf background. So you can see it currently has a shadow behind it, and without the shadow, it just looks a lot less nice, a lot less clean, less professional, I guess, and it's just a bit harder to look at. So this is really good for thumbnails because this is just kind of anecdotal of mine, but if a thumbnail is easy to look at, you're more likely to click on it. I mean, it makes sense, right? And so this is kind of hard to look at because the colors kind of blend into the background a bit, you know, but when you make the background a bit darker behind it by adding a shadow, you can see that it just doesn't blend in to the background as much. It's just easier to see, easy to look at, nicer to look at. It's just better in general. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Anyway, the first thing we want to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and select the enchantment table layer here and then hit this little button down here, which is to duplicate the layer, as it says there. So now, as you can see, we have two enchantment table layers, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck the top one, so just, you know, disable it so it's not visible anymore, and select this one down here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the fill bucket here, and then go ahead and just fill everything in here to complete black, to complete darkness. Now we can increase the tolerance a little bit to try and you know, get as much of it as we can before it does that and makes the whole screen black about there. And then we'll have to select a couple individual things, I think. If you don't have it fully black, you know, if there's like little tiny outlines here, it doesn't really matter too much. You're not going to see anything in here. I could literally delete this and nobody would see it, but I'm going to keep it there because cleanness. <laughs> so yeah, now that we have this blacked out enchantment table, what we can do is re-enable the top enchantment table layer. And you can see there's like a small outline out the side of it. That's just, you know, the fill tool has a little bit of, little bit of leniency with how much it pushes out, I guess you could say. So what we want to do is we want to go to effects now, go to blurs and Gaussian blur. And this is amazing because it takes it from looking like this and then you can go like that and create a shadow. I love this tool so much. It's actually incredible. So I think I, I generally like to go around like here somewhere because too small and it like looks way too defined and too high and it's just like nothing. So I generally like to go with about somewhere in the middle, like maybe about there. Yeah, I kind of like that. As you can see, if we disable the top layer, you can see just kind of the shadow in general. And it really does look like a shadow, like literally it's just black and some blur, but it really does look like a shadow. And then we can, you know, put the enchantment table on top and it looks pretty nice. But we're not going to stop there because it's not super defined and although it does help break it up a little bit like that, that looks infinitely better than that, I reckon. But I want to go ahead and just add a little bit more to this. So I'm going to go ahead, add another layer here and put it below this one here. So, well, I guess it doesn't matter the order there, but I'm just, I've am just always put it below, so I'm just going to do that. And we're going to move our attention up here to the gradient tool. Now this tool is amazing because we can, well, create gradients, which is kind of cool. Um, but we can also go ahead and change the shape of the gradients, so you can do like this weird thing, you can do like a little Nautilus shell looking gradient, it's kind of cool. The one we're going to be looking at though is the radial tool, because this allows you to create perfectly circular gradients here, which is really, really awesome, and this is going to be perfect for our shadow here. Now of course if we do it like this, you can see it'll be on a white background. We don't really want a white background, to be honest, unless you do want a white background, that's perfect. But no, uh, we, we, I want to put it against this bookshelf here. So. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is come down to here, I want to select more, and then I want to select this secondary thing here. By the way, if you don't have any of these things that I've been selecting, it's all up in the top corner here. So these do, you know, disable and re-enable different things. So yeah, it's all up here. B, I'm going to go ahead, select the secondary color here, and just move the opacity down to zero. And that'll basically mean that, well, we can create gradients and you can see it's just against the background there, which is perfect. So now I'm going to get about the center, which I think is about here, maybe a little bit higher of this thing. And I'm just going to drag a gradient out and you can kind of start to see that form like that. So you can see that's kind of like without it. And then you can see it kind of brings into existence and I think it looks quite nice. Now, personally, I think this is a little bit too well defined. Like you can see the shadow a little bit too much. So what I like to do is I like to select this little wrench down here, which goes to layer properties, and you can decrease the opacity a little bit of the whole layer. So you can see that's with it, that's without it. And I kind of want to go somewhere in between, maybe about there, because it's important to not overdo the shadow too much because otherwise it just, I don't know, it looks a bit weird. The whole thing gets a little bit too dark and I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of having too much shadow. So I like to decrease the opacity quite a bit 
and I only really have it there to break up the foreground and the background because otherwise, you know, as I said before, there's not really anything breaking it up. It doesn't look that good. So yeah. And the main feature of the shadow is definitely this. So I think I kind of want to decrease the opacity of this a little bit as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think about halfway there looks pretty good. And I might go ahead and increase the opacity of this one now that that one's a little bit less. Yeah, about there. That looks good. And I'm sure you're looking at yourself now and being like, huh, that doesn't seem like much of a difference. But if I disable these, you can see just how much of a difference it actually makes. There's a lot of difference there, as you can see. So yeah, perfect. Just helps break things up a little bit and looks a little bit nicer. Now, I'm also going to do a similar thing for the episode count, but I don't think I'm going to worry about doing the whole like this, this layer thing here. I'm just going to do a little bit of like a spot gradient here or radial gradient there. And you can see, I'll just bring that out a bit and boom, you can see the episode count a lot more. I'll decrease the opacity a lot on that one. Maybe just to about, about there. looks good, I think, because you know, that's without, that's with, just helps break it up a little bit. Oh, maybe I'll give it a bit more. Perfect, okay, yeah, awesome. And for a little bit of a bonus here, the gradient tool is amazing, by the way. Uh, you can go ahead and I'll set this to white. I'll set it to that, and then we can just add a, a couple sun rays in here, just to make it look like the sun's coming in a bit. There's a bit of light going into the thumbnail, just looks kind of nice. I'm going to give it, yeah, about that angle, so you can see it's a lot more there than over there. And it'll just look a little bit better in general, I think, so I'm going to do that. And of course, decrease the opacity by a lot. Yeah, I think that's about good. Just to, I guess, add a little bit of variation in here, because without it, it's very uniform, very, I guess, samey throughout the whole thing. So I'm just going to add this in a little bit, just to give it a little bit more, I guess, just break it up a little bit more. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, there we go. So that is how to add shadows and a little bit of a bonus in there as well, just in case you want to go ahead and, I guess, add a little bit more in. But yeah, anyway, I think that's going to just about do it for today's tutorial. I really hope that you enjoyed it and found it useful. I will admit it's a little bit of a filler video because I am trying to stockpile videos a lot more because I'm actually going away for two weeks pretty soon. So I'm going to have to, you know, get videos scheduled out for then. So I'm just kind of trying to stockpile up a bunch of videos that I can, you know, slowly release with, you know, the schedule feature on YouTube. But yeah, anyway, really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing if you enjoyed it that much. But yeah, anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Get up, get up.